If I could change one woman's life, I feel like I, I would die the happiest woman. Just to affect one woman, I would feel like I accomplished something. She has been on quite a journey that um, has been a very difficult one, but also a very inspiring one because she is turning this into a very positive experience. It was day four of Creative Live, and Creative Live for me, eight hour presentation every day, and giving as much as you physically can is both emotionally and physically really draining. And on the, the last night uh, before our final day, I was just checking my emails and I came across uh, Nikki's email, and I just read Nikki's story, and something incredible resonated in my intuition and in my soul and I just thought, I have to speak to this girl, I really need to speak to this girl. And uh, I emailed back immediately and I said, call me. Um, I said that I have, that I have a dear friend who um, was diagnosed with cancer three years ago and who uh, was in remission. And Jill is someone who is beautiful and strong and hilarious and brings a positive energy and humor to every situation including cancer and that her dream was to inspire other women to feel okay with their bodies whether they have any form of cancer or any anything that has caused their body to look different from what society how society says our body should look my name is Jill Conley I am 35 years old. I was born and raised in Michigan. Moved to Las Vegas, lived there for 11 years. While I was living in Las Vegas, I met my husband, Bart, and we instantly fell in love. And he lived in Kentucky, so I went to visit him in Kentucky, and then he came to visit me in Vegas. And when we were dropping him off at the airport, um, he was like, I just can't imagine having to wait two weeks to see you. So I was like, well, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to hit the gas? Or do you want to get out of the car and go back home? And he's like, hit the gas. So that's what I did. And he honestly never left. I was diagnosed with breast cancer at 31. And so I went through 16 grueling rounds of chemo. And then I went through radiation and then a total of five surgeries, and then a double mastectomy, and then unfortunately my left breast, they had to remove the implant because it got infected from the radiation. And I was in remission for a little over a year, and then about seven months ago, I was diagnosed with stage four incurable bone cancer. So that's where I'm kind of at right now. The first time that I sat back and I, I was actually sitting with Simona at Creative Live and I sat back and I looked at the email and I spoke to Nikki and I said to Simona, I'm going to take them to Paris. Two weeks ago when I found out that Sue Bryce was taking me to Paris was one of the best days of my entire life. Um, I just was so amazed and excited that somebody was going to help tell my story and being in Paris. Um, has been absolutely amazing and the group of women that have come out to share this experience with me um, it's they're they're amazing and unbelievable when I uh, found out that I had breast cancer um, it was one day before my birthday it was the worst day I mean I, I went in and he was like you know I'm 99.9% .9 you have cancer and I was like what, I can't have cancer, I just moved here, I just got married, I'm too young, and I'm a, like a Vegas girl, like I'm, like I'm a party girl. And it was just devastating, I'm sorry. And then, it just, and then when I pulled up to my house, my husband was standing in the driveway, and just the, the look on his face, 
It's just something that you'll never forget. It's just hard, like when you go through a double mastectomy, it's the worst pain. It's indescribable how painful it is, and you just don't have any pride left. You, your husband, you're like a baby. I couldn't shower. He had to, he had to do everything for me. So you just, you just have no pride. And he was just amazing. And mo most people that have been married for like 30 years don't even go through this. And here, we were married for six months, and I mean, we just have been through hell and back. And that's why he's just, he's my rock and my angel. My anniversary um, was, um, it's my husband's birthday too. So I was smart on that one because he can never forget our anniversary or I will forget his birthday. So <laughs> anyways, he, um, we went um, to a really nice restaurant and so I wanted to feel super beautiful and sexy for him. So I went and I bought this long red wig and I painted on my eyebrows and got eyelashes. So we're sitting at dinner and I am so hot because when you wear a wig, when you have hair, it's completely different than wearing a wig when you're bald. When you're bald and you wear a wig, it's like a heater is on top of your head. So I'm sitting there and I'm sweating and I'm sweating. So I go in the bathroom and I was like, screw it. I just ripped the wig off. I ripped the eyelashes off, wa washed the eyebrows off. And I'm like, this isn't me. I come back to the table and the waiter was like, can I help you? And I was like, you already did. And he was just like, are you kidding me? Like, he, I look like a completely different person. And my husband Bart just was like, that's more like it. Like, you're be this is you, you look beautiful. When you go through cancer, it's not just you that is going through cancer. It's your family, it's your friends, it's all your loved ones. I mean, they're going through it right with me. I, ch I choose not to wear a prosthetic. I have one, but it's hot, it's heavy. And one day I was like, you know what? This Again, this isn't me. And I chose to be who I am and be proud of it and be beautiful. And yeah, people stare when I wear, you know, sundresses or tight shirts or anything I wear. They stop and stare and I, I could care less. And that's why when Sue, uh, photographed me, I decided not to wear it because I just want to show all women that you can be beautiful and sexy and why wear a prosthetic in a photo shoot when I don't wear it in my real life. I met Joe in, I, I think it was like mid sixth grade, and um, we just instantly became friends. She's always been someone to make people laugh and put on a show, and she's just always been the person to bring laughter to everything.
beauty. It's, um, it's the light that shines out of people's eyes when they look at you and when you hold their gaze and then everything else falls away and then you see their true self and it's just staring back at you and it is magnificent and everybody has it. I can speak for all of us to say that we can't imagine a life without her and we don't want to imagine a life without her. Anyways, the reason we're here in Paris is, is because women all over the world who are going through this we want to make sure they're feeling supported and comfortable and beautiful while they're going through this, while we're trying to find a cure. And that's why we're here. And that's why Jill is telling this story. Every year, Victoria's Secret has a huge fashion show. And it's always, you know, which supermodel is going to have the honor of wearing the million dollar bra. I would love it to be a cancer survivor, because in my opinion, after everything that woman's gone through, just that moment that she puts that bra on, I just, I want her to feel like a million dollars because she should, especially after everything she just went through. It's been an opportunity of a lifetime and I just can't wait to share this story. And if we can change one life, then all of our dreams have come true. So thank you. If we can show everybody through her how to just be so beautiful, so beautiful with those scars out, and that then anybody could pretty much, anybody could pretty much confront anything in themselves after seeing something that beautiful. And I will say that the entire time that she was without clothes, I never saw any scars on her body. I only saw this incredible smile. And it just means nothing to anybody to look upon someone and say there's something wrong with you, it's nothing, you only see beautiful. It is the most beautiful thing and it's just incredible to see.